So today we are going to finish up a little bit of talk for um, indirect statement, and we are also going to go over book five, chapter forty-five, which means that we have exactly three days left. Do you guys realize on Tuesday we will be done with all of the new material for Caesar book five? We still have Caesar book six. But Caesar book six is the fun book of Caesar. In fact, there are quite a few syllabus syllabi that start with Caesar book six because it's sort of like, yeah, it's Caesar, let's get used to his style and actually be entertained. But it also works to save it for the end when we're like, come on kids, we can make it. So learn about the golf keeping bunny rabbits. Uh, seriously. Um, okay. So yesterday, we were talking about how to translate different things, and we're going over the worksheet that I gave you slowly but surely. We went and we've gotten down through number four. Or did we do number five and six? I lost. I can look right here. So I left you to go do number six on your own because I wanted you to practice how it's going to look with the passive. Okay? So we have two sentences with the passive. We have. Nega we don't. Everybody hear the deny? Yes, okay. Urban Kashi. And then they have the same thing but with, well, we'll do that in just a second. Okay, so we look at this and here's our main verb, yes? And everybody here, they deny. So that happens in the head or the heart. So that's going to trigger indirect statement which is what's going on here. So you need an accusative subject and you need an infinitive. Yes? Are you with me? I bet you'll notice copy doesn't end in RE. That's because kapara in the active goes to copy. Now remember we've talked about at length the timeline. Right? I'm going to keep drawing this for you. Yes? Remember, everything on bottom is finished, everything on top is unfinished. Okay? And whenever we have our, whenever we have our, um, our indirect statement, we use our infinitive and we line our present infinitive up with the tense of our main verb. So what is the tense of our main verb? Negawe eron, you see the eron, and that's a dead giveaway that it is perfect, okay. So that means that our present infinitive is gonna go here. Our future goes here. And our perfect goes here. Yes? So that means that our present infinitive is going to be translated as the imperfect. Future is going to be translated as would. And our perfect is going to be translated as a blue perfect. Everybody with me? Does that make sense? Does the drawing help? Does it help that I've drawn the chart like 16 times? <laughs> Emily's like, I don't know, if it didn't help me the first time, why would it help me the 16th time? <laughs> <It's more laughs> What, what about the chart does that make sense? So when you're talking about a story, things are either happening now, in the future, or in the past. So that's what this particular, that's what this particular timeline is. It's the timeline I've been using with you since Latin 1. So present is now, everything this way is the past, and everything this way is the future. Latin only has six tenses. Spanish, I don't even know how many tenses they have. Like if you ask a Spanish speaker, speaker how many tenses do you have, they can't tell you because there are so many different variations, okay? We have six. We have things that are happening now and are unfinished, 
We have things that have happened in the past and are unfinished, and we have things that are happening in the future and are unfinished. So that's the top. Everything on top is unfinished. Okay, so that means that it starts now and it continues. It starts. It started then and it continues. It starts in the future and it continues. Okay? Whereas the finished is an event that has just happened, right? Like, it's done. It is a point in time and it is now done. Yes? By the time you read this letter, I will have run away from home. Yes? That's a finished action. Yes? Okay, so that's all that means, finished versus unfinished. So each of those has a very specific translation that we use. Present is is, or are, or am. Imperfect is was, or were. Future is will. Finished. Okay, finished. Blue perfect is had. Perfect is has or have. And future perfect is will have. I, I don't know how else to explain it. It is a timeline. It is when things are happening. And in Latin, that also adds to the fact, like, it adds a little bit more information about is it still happening or is it done? I went to the bathroom. In Latin, it makes a very big difference if I say imperfect, I went to the bathroom, or perfect, I went to the bathroom. Because if I say imperfect, I went to the bathroom, it means I am peeing in front of you right this second. Or pooping. <laughs> Do you understand? I understand that. I just don't understand what bloop is and why it shifts. Blue perfect is past perfect. Blue perfect. It's, you translate it as had. So it happened. I had gone to the bathroom when you walked into class. Yes? So that means it's finished before the past was finished. It's more past. It's literally post perfect. It's more finished. Okay, so that means if our main verb is perfect, we're going to translate our perfect, our perfect infinitive as blue perfect. That's all that means. Okay, so I, let's do it this way. I hope that you have pooped. whomever you would like for me to be speaking to. Okay, I hope that you have pooped. Okay, so pooped, do you see that this is indirect statement? Because I hope, it's happening in my heart. In my heart, I hope that you have pooped. Okay, so that is indirect statement. I don't know the word for poop. I know the word for pee, but anyways, the point is, <laughs> all right? have pooped. This would be a perfect infinitive. It's going to end in isse. So we're just going to say uh, poop isse. Yes? Okay. So, spero, I hope that you have pooped. Spero te poop isse. Burr, 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 burr. Yes? Okay. So, on our timeline, what that's saying is, in the present tense, I hope that you pooped before you came. Yes? Okay. So, I hope that you have pooped. Okay? Now, let's change the sentence. 
I, oh no, it's gonna be the same sentence. I hoped that you had pooped. Okay? Had pooped is still gonna be poopisse. This part is still te poopisse. Okay? The only thing that's changed is I hoped is now speravi. Or you could just do sperabam, whatever works. Yes? The point is it's past tense. Okay? So now my main verb is perfect. Yes, it's in the past. Okay? Here's my main verb. I hoped. Yes? So that means that pupera <coughs> would be, so this is perfect. Yes? And this is imperfect. And this is our main verb. You with me so far? Any terms I need to explain? Okay. But now, my infinitive pupise is happening before the hoping. That's poop. So that's poop. Poop, poop. <laughs> okay? So because I shifted my main verb, my infinitive shift. This is not my present infinitive, and this is my perfect infinitive. That's all it means. You translate your infinitive in a relationship to your main verb. How you translate your infinitive depends on your main verb, and that's the entire point of this worksheet. Okay? If I said, I hope that you are pooping, then that would be imperfect, poopera. Yes? Then that's, I hope that you were pooping. You with me? Okay? So that's all that means. A little bit clearer? This is going on YouTube, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay? So that's, that's all that's happening. That's what I mean whenever I say downshift. You are taking, because, because you only have three tenses of the infinitive, that's terrible color, because you only have three tenses of the infinitive, right? You have present, future, and perfect. Present is always at the same time as the main verb. No matter what tense the main verb is, that's when present happens for the infinitive. Same thing for participles as well. Good news is you don't have to change how you translate participles. It's still going to, participle translations are going to stay the same. But infinitives and indirect statement, you have to alter how you translate them. Does that make sense, Mr. Poet? It's <laughs> No, we'll have to come by after class. I'm out of ideas. You'll have to let me think about it. Okay? All right. Out of ideas. So, our normal sentence, before we started pooping, was, Nega way around urban copy. So we'll just come back. Nega way around urbem copy. So the key here is that this is passive. Okay? Yes? This is still perfect. So that means that on our timeline, my main verb is now perfect. Okay? So that means that present is going to be translated as Imperfect. Perfect is going to be translated as blue perfect. And we don't we don't have the future, so we're not going to worry about that right now. We're just going to look at those two things. Okay? Because the present infinitive always lines up with the main verb. So the sentence like literally says city to be captured. Yes? Literally says city to be captured. That's not what it actually says when you translate it. Okay? So, what did you guys get? This was, this was your assignment last night. They denied that the city was being captured. Yeah, they did. They denied that 
you can say was being, or you can just say was. Okay? So here, perfect is denied. And copy, which is a present infinitive, right? is present, yes? But I'm going to translate it as was captured. Okay? All right, next one. The main sentence is the same. It's still... I got way around... Urban, but now we have cop, Tom, essay. Okay. So now this is still this is still passive, but it's now perfect. My main verb is also still perfect. So my chart hasn't changed. Go and look. My chart hasn't changed. Okay? It's still perfect, deny. But now, instead of copy, I have, over here with the perfect, cop, tom, essay. But that perfect lines up with the pluperfect, so I'm going to translate it as pluperfect. Okay? So, they denied that the city, make it blue perfect. There you go. Had been captured. Okay. Number seven. Did you guys do number seven at all? I don't want to go over it if you haven't tried it yet. Yes? You got it? You think you, you think you can do it for us, Imani? Can I make this right? That's okay. Um, they hope to defeat our enemy. Close. There's actually a trick here that is really important that we talk about. A reflexive pronoun, right? And then we have when we have it an indirect statement, it means that it refers back to the subject that triggered the indirect statement. Okay, so in English we have vague pronoun references. We don't have that problem in Latin because they have so many specific pronouns. You know exactly which they they're talking about. Because say that they is different from ipsos that they, the other they. Okay, or even AOs. Okay, so this one we have the enemies hope. Pretty good with there's your subject, there's your verb. Yes. Okay, so say then is our accusative subject of Wichuro's essay. Okay, so the enemies hope that they, we're good with they equals the enemies. Okay, so the enemies hope that they will conquer our city. Okay. 
So the special thing that we're learning here is how say works. Okay? So say in an indirect statement always refers back to the subject of the verb that triggered the indirect statement. So that knowledge is actually going to change how you translate 9 and 10 into Latin. So I'm going to let you go home and use that knowledge to see if you need to fix 9 and 10, and we'll go over 8, 9, and 10 tomorrow. Okay? And then on our next uh, Caesar test, we'll have a section over in Jarsay. Okay? Everybody good? Too slow, too fast, too much, too silly? Give me some feedback. Mm -hmm. We're all tired. Gotta buckle down. It is very true. Make sure your mommies call your principals. Six hour AP Latin sucks. Okay. All right. Tell me your biggest takeaway from 45. What happened? A lot of fighting? I'm going to go ahead and start a new section because that was all in direct statement.